Thanks for watching the Southern Conference Digital Network. You're watching the Wofford men's soccer team host the Wildcats of Davidson here at Snyder Field in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Kickoff underway in just a matter of seconds. I'm your host for the night, Evie Kiten. I'll be walking you through this 90-minute match here at Snyder Field. We just had the PA announcer address the starting lineups. Davidson with the kickoff. Tonight in goal for the Terriers is senior Garrett Kloss. He played the Terriers last game against the Presbyterian College Blue Hose. You'll often see head coach Ralph Polson switch between two seniors there in goal. Tonight Garrett Kloss getting the start. We'll see if we see any action from fellow senior goalkeeper Joe Wickman. That's a throw in for the Terriers. Kevin Davidson and Kyle Nelson passing the ball around the back line. Big throw in overhead, header won by Kyle Nelson in the back line. Member of the Southern Conference All-Freshman team last year. A foul called on Davidson. Looks like Chris Welsh, a sophomore from Edinburgh, Scotland, to take the free kick for the Terriers. They're going to send the center back, Kyle Nelson, all the way up into the box, have DeFridis cover back along with Davidson. And inside the 18, they'll lay it back, try and find a shot on goal. Several attempts, and that ball goes out for what the referee is calling a terrier corner kick the first of the night after three consecutive attempts on goal. Corner kick, Walford. Looks like Connor Donahue is going to take a left-footed corner kick from the near sideline. Davidson heads it out. That's DeFridis chasing the ball. He's gonna play it back to Davidson. Also got support from Garrett Kloss. A big ball directly forward up to Sam Ross. That's a freshman coming to Wofford out of Wando High School in Mount Pleasant. He's up top with the senior veteran, Matthew Rednick. Also up top there who has the ball right now, Nikki Watson. He scored the game winner in double overtime against PC. A thrilling 3-2 victory for the Terriers in Clinton. A big ball forward, a great flick from a redneck. Donahue is trying to get there for the Terriers. Otherwise, Kennison's going to redistribute that out back to his back line. They'll play it forward. A chest pass from Tanner DeFridis off the back line. And a big ball forward again, trying to find that freshman Sam Ross up top. That ball will go out for a Terrier throw in. Cleared out by Davidson. Nikki Watson on the defense there. Davidson's going to play a big ball forward. 
Davidson, the Wofford player, with a cheeky move over his Davidson defender, trying to find Matthew Rednick up top. Stays on his feet, turns with the ball. And a big switch of the field by Davidson, trying to find Connor Donahue on the other side. Unsuccessful, and that'll be a wildcat throw in. Kennison with the big ball forward. Both DeFridis and Nelson there on the back line. DeFridis and his taking his fifth year for the Terriers. <laughs> Looks like an illegal throw in for the Wildcats. Davidson. The Terrier defender is going to take the throw there. Matthew Rednick trying to shield off his defender. Ball at his feet, makes the turn, plays it forward to Nikki Watson. Kennison comes and collects that for the Wildcats. Nathan Martyr finding his teammate trying to play it forward, but good pressure from Nikki Watson. A big ball forward, trying to play very direct there. DeFridis is there to shield off his defender. Garrett Kloss picks it up quickly. A big punt forward. Andre Siri got the flick there. Rednick ended up with the ball at his feet. Chris Welsh going in for a hard tackle. Ref says advantage there. Saw a foul, but let the Wildcats play through, and Garrett Kloss will call both Kyle Nelson and Drayton Kelly off of that ball. Connor Donahue playing it forward, trying to find a through ball there for Rednick. Kennison comes a little bit outside of the 18 to clear that ball out. A great find from Drayton Kelly there into the midfield. Given away by Andre Siri and Davidson's gonna come back in the other direction. A ref calls an advantage yet again. And then an offsides call. Garrett Kloss will take the free kick for the Terriers. A ball played forward, and again, another offsides call. You can see Kyle Nelson raise his hand there. Looks like Drayton Kelly might take that free kick. He'll give it off to Garrett Kloss, actually. A big kick forward from Garrett Kloss. A redneck's going to try and get up. Wins the flick. Sam Ross was in behind. Fetcher is going to play it forward. He tries to find Pragnell, who makes a turn with the ball. Another ball forward, playing very direct. Trying to find Aiden Peterson, not to be confused with Adrian Peterson. And the referee is going to call... A corner kick here for Davidson. Looks like the Terriers are gonna man mark inside the box. Kyle Nelson there, great defense. He steps up, wins that ball, plays it clear out, and tells his team to clear out of the back. That's Nikki Watson adding some pressure on to Tanner Carlson. 
Kennison's going to have the ball at his feet and play it forward. A great win from Kyle Nelson. Davidson gets a foot in there. And then Andre Siri with the header. Davidson will settle it down. And a big switch of the field. It's coming from Hunter Howard. Finds the far side being defended by Tanner DeFridis. Chris Welsh will come in there and help. And referee will call a foul there on Chris Welsh. The Wildcats will have a free kick about halfway between midfield and the 18. Head is going to take the free kick for the Wildcats. There's just about 34 minutes remaining in the first half. Kyle Nelson wins yet another header. Nikki Watson tries to settle it down, and the referee is going to call a handball there. Not too far outside of the 18, but not before backing the Wildcats up just a few yards. Fetcher and Pragnell are over this ball. Three in the wall for Garrett Kloss. Everybody else man marked on top of the 18. Pragnell is going to take the kick right to Garrett Kloss. And Garrett's going to have a quick punt out. Collected right in the midfield by Fetcher. Davidson settles it down, finds Siri in the midfield. Kyle Nelson to Chris Welch, and he's going to switch the ball over to the left side. Sam Ross, the freshman on the far sideline, taking his defender, gets across in the box. Siri is going to try and get something on it. Or try to at least get a corner kick out of the deal. And he does just that. Looks like it's going to be second corner kick of the night for the Terriers. Another left-footed in-swinger from Corner kick, Connor Donahue. Kyle Nelson flying in the box. Kennison gets a fist on it. Nikki Watson trying to get a touch. Instead, that's Peterson who's going to play the ball across the field, try and find Pragnell, well defended by the senior Tanner DeFridis. He's going to find Sam Ross up top, Matthew Rednick trying to make a run. Another ball played forward. Great choice by Kyle Nelson to get ahead on that, allow Garrett Kloss to pick the ball up and restart out of the back line through Davidson. Kyle Nelson to Andre Siri back to Nelson. He's going to look forward at this point. Matthew Rednick trying to make a run, trying to, I think, get a ball up in the air. And Nelson played that one on the ground. Peterson with the ball at his feet, defended by Davidson. And almost gets by Davidson. Davidson will have to get a touch on it to get that ball out for a Davidson corner kick. Right-footed ball inside the box. It looked like Kloss got a punch on it, and the referee is ultimately going to 
call a foul, it looks like, inside the box. And Kyle Nelson kind of limping outside the 18. with a big kick forward. Davidson trying to get ahead on it. That's going to be a throw in for the Wildcats. Ends up with the ball in his hand. Meanwhile, it looks like a Davidson Wildcat a little slow to get up. That looks like looks like it's going to be Maxi Prag now. He seems to be okay jogging back towards midfield. Looks like it rolled out of bounds, but the referee calls a free kick there. Drayton Kelly and Kyle Nelson try and get up and challenge the header. up in the hands of Garrett Kloss. Up top, we've got Matthew Rednick who slides over to the left side. Meanwhile, Sam Ross replaces him in that center forward position. A little chip ball over the top. Drayton Kelly comes back to cover for DeFridis. Ball ends up in the hands of Garrett Kloss. He tried to play quickly out to Kevin Davidson. Instead, he goes to the other side, finds Tanner DeFridis, who will play the ball forward. That one's going to roll out of bounds before Matthew Rudnick can get a touch on it. A good flick from Sam Ross. It's Connor Donahue. He'll play it forward, trying to find Ross again. Drayton Kelly gets a little push there. No foul call. Garrett Kloss will have to clear it out. And Andre Siri steps in to win that ball. Plays it forward with a little outside of the foot. Sam Ross beating his defender with speed. Matthew Rednick trying to get inside the six. Instead, Sam Ross is going to try it himself. That one goes over the crossbar, and Kennison is going to have a goal kick for the Wildcats. Kennison clearing a ball off the field. Watson trying to shield that one out. Kevin Davidson's going to take the throw in. Redneck comes back, wins the ball at his feet, plays it back to Davidson with a man who's kind of cutting off his options towards Kyle Nelson. Aiden Peterson being chased down by Andre Siri. No foul called, although Peterson ended up on the ground. Matthew Redneck in the midfield, meanwhile, 
Connor Donahue slides out to that left side, trying to keep that one in bounds just a bit too much. Meanwhile, Sam Ross is shifted over to the center forward position. A big ball sent forward, quite direct. It looks like Tanner DeFridis was still trying to recover to the back line. So Chris, Chris Welsh slides over. Kyle Nelson, direct ball up top, looking for Sam Ross on side, but Kennison will come right to that line of the 18, and great choice by Jordan Hill to head that one back to Kennison. Good defense by Drayton Kelly. Bragnell plays it back. That was Fetcher who was making a run from the midfield. Donahue plays it forward. Looks like Nikki Watson has the ball at his feet, also has a defender, gets a touch on it, and that one's going to go out of bounds for what the referee calls a Wildcat goal kick. Under 25 minutes remaining in the first half. Welsh steps in to make the tackle. Instead, gets another foul called on him. That's his second of the night. Referee's going to have a little talk with Welsh. Left-footed free kick into the box ends up in the hands of Garrett Kloss. <laughs> Nikki Watson trying to win the header there. Connor Donahue will play it back forward. That's a redneck trying to shield off his defender and get a ball to the feet of Andre Siri. Great header from Kyle Nelson. He'll still have the opportunity to win the ball. Ball played forward. Davidson defending there. Great defense from Kevin Davidson. Meanwhile, Kyle Nelson tracking back to the back line. Referee calls offsides. Looks like Peterson came from an offsides position to receive that ball. Nelson takes the easy free kick to Drayton Kelly. He'll play Kevin Davidson forward. Kyle Nelson looking to switch the field over to DeFridis, unable to do so. Kennison's going to take the kick forward. DeFridis tries to get up and win the header. Instead, the referee's going to call a foul on Davidson. It looks like that was Coxhead with the foul. Welsh will take the free kick for the Terriers. Ball played forward and will eventually roll out of bounds. Kevin Davidson to take the throw in for the Terriers. Rednick making a run. 
open as you come towards the near sideline. Referee's going to call a foul on Zach Marks. Connor Donahue is going to take a left footed free kick. Again, the Terriers' strongest header, Kyle Nelson, the center back, getting forward on this free kick. That one bounces off the head of his defender. Donahue with another look inside the box. That one right to the back line. Watson trying to hold off his defender. Great work with the ball at his feet. And Tanner Carlson makes the tackle. That ball is going to roll out of bounds for a Terrier corner kick. Again, another left footed in swinger from corner kick, Connor Terriers. Donahue. And a great punch out by Tennyson, and it looks like Kyle Nelson got a head on that ball. It looks like it didn't even go into the goal because it bounced right off that back bottom bar of the goal. And that is first goal of the season for sophomore Kyle Nelson with just under 20 minutes remaining in the first half. exactly what the Terriers are looking for when they send their center back all the way up into the attacking third. They're looking for him to get his head on some of those free kicks. Referee's going to call offsides again. The Wildcats playing very direct tonight, looking for their top line. A few offsides calls this evening. Kelly's going to take the free kick. Sam Ross keeps it in bounds with the outside of his foot. Tanner DeFridis there for support as well. Matthew Redneck slid out to the far side. He's going to try and look inside the box. Nikki Watson is there. Sam Ross plays a left-footed ball. A redneck gets ahead on it. And Kennison makes a great save for Davidson. <laughs> Kelly comes over to cover for DeFridis. He drops in. Meanwhile, Welsh will collect the ball for the Terriers and come out in the other direction. Connor Donahue makes a turn with it. Nikki Watson playing the ball up to Welsh. She's made a run all the way from the back line up to the near near corner. That'll be a throw in for Kevin Davidson. A redneck again, making runs inside the box. A redneck shielded that one for what he thought was a Wofford corner kick. Instead it goes out for a Davidson goal kick. Entering for Davidson, number 20, Ned Morissette. And Kennison kicks that one out of bounds. Kevin Davidson's going to take the throw in. Nikki Watson with two defenders on him still manages to get the ball to Andre Suri. Hunter Howard plays it wide. Sam Ross was there to defend from that 
outside forward spot, tracking back. Fetcher with the ball at his feet, being defended by Welsh. Trying to find a through ball there to Peterson, but well defended by Kevin Davidson. Zach Marks tries it from way out. And the referee is going to call a corner kick for Davidson. Looks like Fetcher is going to take the kick. Peterson's also over there for support. The ball inside the box. Welsh gets ahead on it. DeFridis was there. And Marks tried it on goal. Dradon Kelly tries to settle that one down. Davidson looking to swing a ball in the box. Sam Ross was there to defend. Kyle Nelson got ahead on it. And another, and he'll clear that one out of the 18. Donahue's going to try and keep it in bounds, unable to do so. And Peterson's going to take a quick throw for Davidson. Kyle Nelson clears that one way out. And that will set up another corner kick for the Wildcats. Corner kick, corner Wildcats. Kick. Another great clearance from Nelson. Donahue trying to get a foot on it. Sam Ross is making a run along with Nikki Watson up top and it looks like the Terriers have numbers. All three forwards, a redneck calling for it inside the 18. Sam Ross gets a touch on it. And a good counter attack to try and catch the Checking Wildcats the off Terriers, guard. Number four, Matthew Ward. And number 11, Lucas Altman. Ball at his feet. <laughs> Kevin Davidson to take the throw in for Wofford. Matthew Ward's up top with Matthew Rednick. And Sam Ross now. Looks like they replaced Nikki Watson up top. In the midfield, it looks like Andre Siri went out. And instead, it's freshman Lucas Altman who checked into the center midfield. Altman from Johnson City, Tennessee, the defending Gatorade State Player of the Year for high school boys soccer in the state of Tennessee. Donahue plays it forward. A redneck tried to keep that one in bounds. Good defense by Davidson. He finds Matthew Ward. He'll play Altman inside, who's looking for a run from Sam Ross. A kick forward, followed by a head from Tanner DeFridis. Connections in midfield for the Wildcats. Good defense from Altman. Referee's going to call a foul on Altman, though. And the Wildcats will play quickly right around midfield. Good header from Tanner DeFridis while he's pedaling backwards. Great cover from Sam Ross. That'll be a Davidson throw in.
Jordan Hill plays it forward. Drayton Kelly with the touch. A good turn from Sam Ross to play it forward, trying to find a redneck who makes a turn with the ball at his chest. Wanted a foul there. Instead, the ball went out of bounds, and Jordan Hill took that throw in quickly for the Wildcats. Kloss has the ball at his feet, trying to kill some time with just about 10 minutes remaining in the first half. The Terrier is still up 1-0 following that 25th minute goal from Kyle Nelson. DeFridis trying to make the tackle there. Hunter Howard with the ball at his feet a few turns. Dishes it out. And Altman trying to defend in the midfield. Instead, it's Walsh who does so for the Terrier as he goes down hard. Referee will stop the clock. Call a foul there on Morset. And again, that's Chris Welsh, for Davidson, number 16, the sophomore out of Davis. Edinburgh, Scotland. He walks off the field. And it looks like in his place came freshman Austin Tuggle out of Malden High School in Simpsonville, South Carolina. He checks into the midfield alongside Donahue and fellow freshman Lucas Altman. Ball goes out of bounds off DeFridis. Davidson's going to swing this ball. They're going to swing it around their back line, but great pressure up top for Matthew or Rednick. Jordan Hill plays it forward. Good pressure from Sam Ross and Lucas Altman, the pair of freshmen in there. A redneck chasing for the Terriers. And Martyr is just gonna clear that one out of bounds. Checking in for Walford, number Looks nine, like Charlie Heffron. And number 28, Jack Sicker. Looks like a redneck and Ross both checking out up top. In comes Heffron and Sicker for the Terriers. Altman lays it off. Heffron tries to play it inside the box. Tuggle's going to be there for a great head pass over to DeFridis, who tries to play a first-time left-footed ball. That one's going to go right to Kennison. Let's 
Sicker providing pressure there. Altman trying to get up in the midfield to win that one. DeFridis is going to play it all the way back to Garrett Kloss. He's going to play a big ball forward. And again, Sicker there trying to win the header. Matt Ward with the ball at his feet. Tries to turn there. Instead, Zach Marks will break that one up. Peterson with the ball at his feet. He lays it off to Morissette. Now Peterson and Ward going at it. He'll drop it back to Kevin Davidson. That one's going to go out of bounds before Connor Donahue can get there. Fetcher trying to get a left-footed ball inside the box. Instead, well defended by Kevin Davidson, and that ball is going to roll out for Garrett Kloss' goal kick. Checking in for the Wildcat, number 24, John Creel, and number 26, John Dale. Great header from Lucas Altman. That one's going to be cleared out by Peterson, and Kevin Davidson's going to take the throw in. Ball forward, trying to find Jack Sicker. Tuggles making a run inside the box along with Heffron. Tuggle gets a touch on it, and Jordan Hill's going to clear it out. Up to Fetcher. He's going to find Morissette. And then he's going to play it out wide. DeFridis coming over to cover. Heffron came back to help defend. And that one's going to roll out for a Garrett Kloss goal kick. With just about six minutes remaining until halftime. Jack Sicker came back to win that one from that center forward spot. Great pressure by Heffron. Donahue and Tuggle defending for the Terriers. Now Drayton Kelly is there. He's defending for the Terriers against John Creel over on that far side. DeFridis provides cover, trying to clear it out with the left foot. That one's going to go out of bounds. Nelson gets up, wins the header. Kevin Davidson with the touch as well. And Charlie Hefferin, who's playing left outside forward, is all the way over in that right back position to help defend. Jack Sicker providing high pressure up top, along with Matthew Ward. Carter plays that one forward. It's going to roll out for a interior throw in deep within their own half. Nash Wagnon checks in for Connor Donahue. Just under four minutes remaining until halftime. Davidson finds Altman. That one's going to roll out of bounds. Peterson to take the throw for the Wildcats. And a good clearance from Davidson. Zach Marks trying to keep it alive. Instead, it'll, it will roll out of bounds. Kevin Davidson with another throw in for the Terriers. Altman 
collects the ball at his chest, finds Drayton Kelly. Time and space on that back line for the Terriers as DeFridis wants to make a run up top. He finds Hefferin. Nash Wagner there to defend as well. Kyle Nelson to get up to win the header. And now it's Austin Tuggle with the ball at his feet looking for Jack Sicker up top. Several men to beat before he gets to goal. Trying by himself nonetheless. He wanted a corner kick there and said it's going to be a goal kick for Kennison. Wagner wins the header in midfield. Jesse Tuggle plays it down. And Matthew Ward now with the ball at his feet. Tuggle with the ball at his feet. Tries to drop it back to Kevin Davidson, who will find Lucas Altman in the middle. He'll hold on to it, find Kyle Nelson. Well, swinging around the back line all the way over to DeFridis. Kennison with the ball at his feet. He plays it forward after some pressure from Jack Sicker. A great header from Kyle Nelson. And we're right at one minute remaining until halftime. Peterson with the ball at his feet, trying to beat Kyle Nelson. And that one shielded off, and that will be a goal kick for Garrett Kloss. Lucas Altman gets up with a great flick. Ball at the feet of Jack Sicker. Tuggle making a run out to that right side. Matthew Ward also there to help out on the near sideline. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And that's how we'll head into halftime. The Terriers. Of one to nothing against the Davidson one. Wildcats and after that 25th minute goal from sophomore Kyle Nelson. We'll be back in just a minute with the second half prizes. action here from Snyder Field. Red 97! Set! Red 97! Did you say 97? Yes. You know, that reminds me of Geico's 97% customer satisfaction rating. 97%? Helped by Geico's fast and friendly claim service. <laughs> huh. Oh yeah, baby. Geico's as fast and friendly as it gets. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. Hard playing kids. Taking the ball all the way in. College athletes burning up the tracks. It doesn't matter if you're an elite athlete, a weekend warrior, or just into casual recreation. If you get hurt, the doctors, athletic trainers, and physical therapists at Spartanburg Regional Sports Medicine Institute will get you back into your game better than ever. We utilize the latest in orthopedic care so you can return from injury to the energetic lifestyle you love. To find out more, call us at Southern Conference. And it's on us to stop sexual assault on our college campuses. 
to get in the way before it happens. To get a teammate or friend home safe. To not blame the victim. We are the Southern Conference. And it's on us to look out for each other on our campuses. To not turn a blind eye. To intervene when something isn't right. We are the Southern Conference. And it's on us to stand up. To step in. To take responsibility. We are the Southern Conference. And, and we, we take, take the pledge to stop sexual assault. It's on us, all of us, to make a difference on our campuses. Join us and take the pledge to be a part of the solution at itsonus.org. I'm John I. Marino, Commissioner of the Southern Conference, and I'm thrilled to be able to announce that ESPN and the Southern Conference have signed an agreement to have our member institutions produce live sporting events for ESPN3, with all 10 members being on board by the 2017-18 academic year. Mercer actually had, had uh, started doing ESPN3 the year before they joined the conference. It was an initiative by their previous conference and so we were able to use a lot of their expertise they were very helpful in getting us started in uh, having their video people talk with some of our video people um, so we use that kind of as the foundation and have built from there and and i think i think what we've learned is we, we've we've come a long way in a very short period of time our video coordinators have done a great job and and our administrators including the presidents and chancellors, have been very supportive of this. We've come a long way in a short period of time. Uh, we've, we've learned from each other. We've done a lot of, uh, had a lot of conversations about best practices and things to look for and things to, to anticipate. Um, it's a situation where everybody's had to learn new equipment. You know, fortunately, we were able to take some uh, operating reserves and purchase uh, equipment for everybody that's made the transition easier. Um, by the end of this year, the end of this basketball season, I believe nine of our ten schools will have at least produced a, at least one uh, men's basketball game for ESPN3, and most of them, five or six of them at least. Uh, not only are we using staff employees, we're also using students, and we're getting uh, some uh, tremendous experience for our students who want to learn how to operate a camera, how to produce an event, uh, how to do graphics for a televised event. Uh, they're great learning experiences. The creation of the SOCON Digital Network last year and then the move to ESPN3 within a couple of years, I think it works you know, hand in glove. Uh, we, we were hoping to maybe do 250 events last year. In the first year of the SOCON Digital Network, we wound up doing 608. We're already over 900 or so uh, total since we uh, launched uh, a year ago in August. Uh, but the SOCON Digital Network is not being uh, phased out by ESPN3. I think we're going to get to a point where most of the football and basketball will be housed on ESPN3 and selected games from uh, sports like soccer and volleyball and softball, baseball and lacrosse. But there's always going to be a place for the SOCON Digital Network. Our schools just don't have uh, the resources to move everything over to ESPN3. There are going to be times where there are conflicts 
uh, where there are two events going on at once. Maybe more resources are devoted to the ESPN3 broadcast in that situation. Uh, but I'm confident that the SOCON digital network will remain a place where people will go to watch uh, uh, SOCON content. Madness begins here. Make sure you're at the U.S. Cellular Center in Asheville, North Carolina, March 2nd through 6th for the 2017 SoCon Basketball Championships presented by General Shale. You don't want to miss the action as your favorite SoCon teams compete for a championship and a berth in the NCAA tournament. Book your travel and tickets by logging on to SoConTravel.com or by contacting the U.S. Cellular Center box office. Madness begins here. Get your tickets today. Hi, I'm John I. Marino, Commissioner of the Southern Conference. With the full cooperation of our presidents and chancellors, the conference has created the SOCON Academic Exchange, a cooperative structure designed to benefit our academic efforts. Three primary initiatives will be the collaboration of international study programs, a leadership development program to benefit faculty and staff, and an undergraduate research forum. For more information on the SOCON Academic Exchange, Visit SoconSports.com. Located in Spartanburg, South Carolina, Wofford College combines a challenging liberal arts education with a close-knit campus community. Wofford offers a complete, transformative living and learning experience. Wofford empowers its students with skills and opportunities that employers need and graduate schools want. A Wofford graduate is prepared for what's next. Wofford College. It's your world. These are the student athletes. This is where they train. These are their homes. This is where they become Rhodes Scholars and academic All-Americans. These are the athletes they've always admired. This is where champions are crowned and moments are made. This is the Southern Conference. Wofford College combines a challenging liberal arts education with a close-knit campus community. Located in Spartanburg, South Carolina, Wofford offers 25 major fields of study and a faculty that mentors students to think independently develop goals, and work creatively. At Wofford, 93% of students choose to live on campus all four years, 
It's an enriching residential experience that culminates at The Village. The NCAA Division I Wofford Terriers compete in the Southern Conference across 18 teams. As the Terriers continue to excel with community support, they're always the best game in town. A few miles away is Wofford's Goodall Environmental Study Center. Overlooking Lawson's Fork of the Pacolet River, the center features exceptional opportunities for hands-on environmental experience. While Wofford's campus can take your breath away, nestled in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains and just a few hours from the beach, Wofford ranks consistently as a top 10 college for study abroad experience. Students are prepared for the world after Wofford. At the space, students learn skills and find experiences that employers need and graduate schools want. Our graduates are prepared for what's next. Wofford College, it's your world. Welcome back into your second half action here at Snyder Field. The Wofford men's soccer team hosting the Wildcats of Davidson, a score of one to nothing in favor of the Terriers following a 26th minute goal from sophomore Kyle Nelson off a header following a corner kick. Good news for the Terriers is that Chris Welsh is back in in the midfield after 
leaving in the first half with an injury. A few other changes to the lineup. In the midfield, it started as Donahue, Siri, and Welsh in the midfield now. Similar to how they finished off the first half, we've got Welsh in there along with Charlie Heffron and Lucas Altman. Up top in the first half, we started with Nikki Watson, Sam Ross, and Matthew Redneck. Ross and Redneck in there to start the second half. But instead of Watson, we have Jack Sicker, who ended the first half up top after providing some great pressure. Back line remains the same as it has all game. Garrett Kloss in goal. Tanner DeFridis on the left side with Drayton Kelly and Kyle Nelson in the center back position. And Kevin Davidson over as that right outside back. Welsh will clear it forward, looking for Matthew Rednick, The target forward up top, Sam Ross, heads it down to his feet. And he'll shield that one out of bounds and try and take a quick throw in. It's a good choice from DeFridis. He finds Welsh. Ragnell with the ball at his feet. Drayton Kelly got his right foot in there, got a touch. That one goes out for a Wildcat throw in. Kelly trying to clear the ball out with his hips facing towards goal. That one will go out for corner a Wildcat Davidson. corner kick. Peterson's going to take a left-footed corner kick here. Nelson gets up and gets ahead on it. That one a little bit too close for comfort for Garrett Kloss. Goes corner out of bounds in the direction of the goal. And Peterson's going to take another corner kick. Nelson gets up again, this one. Goes back out over the end line. It'll be a corner kick on the other side now for Davidson. Corner kick, Davidson. He's gonna stop the clock here for a second. Looks like he wants to talk to Matthew a Redneck, Jordan Hill inside the six. Clock still running. Ball inside the box. Kyle Nelson gets up for the header, but Garrett Kloss calls him off of it. Gets the ball in his hands and quickly plays it out to Lucas Altman, who has the ball on his feet on the near sideline. Charlie Heffron calling for it, along with Matthew Redneck, who tells Heffron to leave the ball. And Jack Sicker is going to let that one go out of bounds. He was trying to take a quick throw in, but DeFridis calls him off of it. Welsh plays it forward. And Kennison calls his defenders off that one, ends up with the ball in his hands. Zach Marks plays it out to Tanner Carlson. Hunter Howard finds Zach Marks again. Plays a left-footed ball forward, trying to find Pragnell. That ball is going to go out of bounds. Pragnell not happy about that call. Referee's going to stop the clock, have a little word with Pragnell, provide him with a yellow card. Oh 
referee stop the clock. Looks like he's booking that one on Pragnell for use of profanity on the near sideline. That one's going to be a throw in for Tanner DeFridis. Good header from Welsh. Good choice by Ross to settle that ball down. Another Terrier throw in. DeFridis with a big throw forward. A Redneck gets up to head it back to Heffron, who heads it back forward. Consecutive headers in a row. Tanner Carlson to take the throw for Davidson. Welsh steps in to make the tackle. Another throw in for Carlson. Lucas Altman defending two in midfield. Welsh will step in to help cover for his teammate. Another foul is called on Welsh although he's the one that ends up on the ground. That's going to be a free kick for the Wildcats just outside the 18. Looks like Garrett Kloss is trying to get four or five inside that wall. Efree's going to back them up to 10 yards. Chris Welsh still kind of limping around inside the 18. Banged up from the first half. Three Wildcats over top of the ball, and Garrett Kloss makes the save, looks to punt it out quickly. Redneck trying to keep that one in bounds. Charlie Heffron plays it forward, trying to get to Matthew Redick just a bit too much, and that one will roll out over the near sideline. Davidson will take the quick throw in. Kyle Nelson steps in to win that ball, goes just by him. Great cover from Drayton Kelly. A left-footed ball sent inside the box. Garrett Kloss does some good work to end up with that ball in his hands as he looks to play forward. Matthew at Redneck being a strong target forward there, trying to hold off his defender, although it looked like Charlie Heffern was gonna end up with the ball. Referee calls an advantage to be a little bit more centrally located towards the goal at the spot of that foul. Lucas Altman and Chris Welsh are over top of the ball on that free kick. Looks like Welsh is going to be taking it. Assistant coach Shane Calvert was instructing Lucas Altman to get wide, try and play a pass through him. Instead, Chris Welsh tries it directly on goal. High pressure from Matthew Rednick on that back line, along with Jack Sicker. And the Terriers are going to see if they can lock it inside their attacking third. That one bounced off the head of a Wildcat. Quick throw from Davidson. Sicker trying to turn with the ball. Two men on him, still providing high pressure. Not allowing that ball to get cleared forward. When it does, Drayton Kelly is going to be there. He'll play it backwards to Garrett Kloss. Kloss will send a first-time ball forward. Lucas Altman is there in the center midfield. And a smart play from Pragnell. He was coming from an offsides position. He lets that one roll through. 
And Garrett Kloss will pick it up in his hands to restart the Terriers. Clean challenge there, Jack Sicker. A little bit slow to get up, looks like he's okay. A good tackle in midfield. A referee's gonna call a foul on Lucas Altman. That'll be a free kick just behind midfield for Davidson. Good defense by Jack Sicker. He intercepts that ball. Charlie Hefferin with the ball at his feet. He's gonna try and find Sam Ross. Kevin Davidson providing cover over on that back line. It gets a touch and a great clearance out. Jack Sicker tries to collect that one on his chest. Lucas Altman there to defend. is played backwards into midfield. Marks is going to play it forward, and the AR on the near sideline is going to call offsides on Davidson. Garrett Kloss to take this one for the Terriers. Charlie Hefferin was challenging for the Terriers. He gets a foul called on him. Referee will issue a yellow card. And that is Tanner Carlson, who was slow to get up for the Wildcats. Tennyson will take the free kick for Davidson here. Looks like Tanner Carlson's gonna be okay. Kevin Davidson steps to win the header. He's covered by Kyle Nelson, who will send a big direct ball forward. Matthew Rednick trying to keep it in bounds. He does that. Well defended on that back line. Referee's gonna call a foul on a redneck and that ball is gonna be coming out the other way for Davidson. A few substitutions waiting to check in at midfield on the next throw in. Altman trying to collect that ball in midfield. He finds Charlie Hefferin, who will play it out wide. A great overlapping run from the right back, Kevin Davidson. That will roll out of bounds. First for Davidson, number 18, Drew Kruger. For the Terriers, number 18, Nikki Watson. And number 21, Andrea Suri. So it looks like Siri checks back in for the Terriers along with Nikki Watson. Looks like Siri replaced Charlie Hefferin in the midfield. He's in there along with Welsh and Altman. Meanwhile, Watson went up top, replaced Jack Sicker over on that right striker. Good pressure from Chris Welsh. Tanner DeFridis now with the ball at his feet. We'll slow it down. Find Chris Welsh, who will find the feet of Andre Siri. He plays it up to Sam Ross, who's gonna try and get a left-footed ball inside the box. He gets something on it. Looks like that was deflected by the Wildcats, and that will go out for the Wofford corner kick.
Chris Welsh will take the corner kick and in swinger here with just about 30 minutes remaining in the second half. That ball will go over the head of Sam Ross. Dradon Kelly tried to keep it in bounds. Instead, that one will roll out for a goal kick for Kennison. Great win in the midfield by Lucas Altman. And a second time as Nikki Watson tries to collect it up top. Altman plays a ball forward, trying to find Matthew Rednick in behind that back line. A Rednick with a touch inside, looking for Sam Ross inside the six. A great ball played back at 45 degree angle, trying to find Sam Ross, who had a great look on goal. That one's gonna roll out over the end line. And that will be a corner kick for the Terriers to be taken by Chris Welsh. This one, a right-footed outswinger. Still looking for Kyle Nelson, who scored earlier off a corner kick. Looks like that one rolled out over the end line. Quarter kick, Walford. Chris Welsh will take it again. And looks like Welsh was trying to play quickly. Looks like the center ref is still trying to understand what exactly the AR was calling. They'll converse for a moment while the clock is stopped. It looks like Chris Welsh will be retaking that corner kick. Instead, Welsh will go inside the box. It looks like Lucas Altman will take the corner kick. That one on the ground. Nelson dummies it, and Welsh has a good look on goal. That one rolls out over the end line for a Kennison goal kick. A great header in midfield from Lucas Altman. Sam Ross tries to settle it down. Andre Siri in there as well. Referee's gonna call a foul on Siri. Davidson trying to play quickly. And referee says that the ball was not stopped before that free kick. So the Wildcats will retake that one just behind midfield. Kyle Nelson challenges for the header. Mickey Watson trying to shield off his defender. Kevin Davidson slides out. And Kyle Nelson makes a great slide tackle. A great touch by Kevin Davidson, just a, a little touch, little foot in there. Andre Siri plays it up top. That's Sam Ross with the ball at his feet. Matthew Redneck, 2v1, inside the 18. He goes down. We'll see where the referee calls that foul, whether it's in or outside of the 18. Looks like the referee has spotted this ball just outside of the 18. Kennison's gonna put pretty much his entire team on that wall. Referee's gonna count out 10 yards, which is gonna push him back just on top of the six. Not quite sure which Terrier who's on top of the ball is gonna strike this on goal. And a 
strike on goal. The Terriers strike again. Andre Siri with the free kick to the Terriers in the 64th minute. And that is series first goal on the season. The sophomore out of Kennesaw, Georgia, just outside of Atlanta. Great strike on goal following that foul drawn by Matthew Orednick. The Terriers looking for a quick throw. Looks like they're not gonna take their foot off the gas following that second goal. DeFreitas with a quick throw in, looking for Lucas Altman. Referee's going to call another foul on the Terriers. That one on Lucas Altman, again, just behind midfield. Free kick from the Wildcats, and Kyle Nelson gets up to win the header. Altman with a kick forward. Sam Ross gets ahead on it. Right on Kelly getting some direction from Kloss. Meanwhile, a defender has slid over to cut off that option between Kelly and Kloss. That one's going to roll out of bounds for a Terrier goal kick. Checking in for the Wildcats, number eight, Christian Fetcher. And number 16, Tiani Davis. Carlson gives it to Jordan Hill to take the throw in in the Davidson attacking third here. Looks like Jordan Hill's got a, a big throw in as everyone backs up inside the 18, inside the six. And a great throw inside the box for the Wildcats. Lucas Altman trying to get past his defender to clear that one out. Good defense from Peterson to deny that clearance. Checking in with the Terriers, number 19, Connor Donahue. Looks like Connor Donahue's checking in for the Terriers. He replaces Matthew Arednick. It's like he's possibly sliding Sam Ross over to that target forward spot, and Donahue's going to come to the left side. A left-footed player along with Tanner DeFreitas. Andre Siri trying to find that ball over to the far side, trying to find the run up top from Kevin Davidson. And a great header from Kyle Nelson. Siri trying to settle it down. Looks like it could have been a handball there. Davidson wanted the call. Nothing from the referee. Instead, Donahue plays it forward inside the 18. Trying to find Sam Ross, but Kennison will come way off his line to pick the ball up for the Wildcats. from Kyle Nelson before that ball can be played forward for Davidson. About 
22 minutes remaining in the second half as Davidson gets a left-footed cross inside the box, trying to find someone inside the 18. Instead, Connor Donahue is going to collect it. Dribbling down the near sideline, runs into a defender. And that's Tanner Carlson, who's going to keep it in bounds. He plays it forward, trying to find Danny Davis. Instead, the AR is going to raise his flag, and that's going to be a throw in for the Terriers. First for Wofford. Number 14, Austin Tuggle. For Davidson, number 24, John Creel. Austin Tuggle checks into the midfield. He replaces fellow freshman Lucas Altman. Nikki Watson found up top, providing pressure. Referee is going to call foul on Watson. Free kick into the box for Davidson. Donahue clears it out. Sam Ross trying to get there. Austin Tuggle there to provide some pressure in the midfield. Ball played forward. Gets past Kyle Nelson and the AR is going to raise his flag and call offsides on Pragnell. Garrett Kloss will take the free kick here for the Terriers with just about 20 minutes remaining in the second half. Great header one in the midfield. Dradon Kelly plays it wide to DeFridis. High pressure from Danny Davis. DeFridis plays it forward. Connor Donahue and Jordan Hill both going for that ball. And you heard the PA announcer say that. Alex Thompson checking in. He replaces Sam Ross up top. Likely not the last time that we're going to see Ross this game. Chris Welsh there providing cover. Drayton Kelly and then Kyle Nelson will ultimately clear it out of bounds and that one's gonna go out for a Davidson throw in. Hitting for the Wildcats, number three, Matt Rinica. Pressure from Connor Donahue. He gets a toe on it. Another Davidson throw in. Donahue plays a left footed ball forward. Nikki Watson up top. Collects that at his feet, lays it off to Alex Thompson. That one was well defended by Fetcher for the Wildcats. Kruger plays that one into the box. Tuggle slides to get a foot on it, and that one's going to roll out of bounds for a Wildcat corner, corner kick. kick Davidson. A 
left-footed corner kick sent into the box. Kyle Nelson gets ahead on it. You can hear Garrett Kloss talking to his back line, telling everybody to step up outside the box. McCabe plays the ball inside. That one's broken up by Alex Thompson. Nicky Watson tries to turn his defender. Big direct ball is going to be played forward again. This one a bit too much. And Garrett Kloss is going to kind of hold on to this one before he has to pick it up. Allow some seconds to tick off the clock. With just about 16 minutes remaining. Second half. Referee is going to have that throw in come back so that both teams can Checking get in for their Davidson, substitutions number in. Number nine, Aiden Peterson. Entering for Walford. Number 11, Lucas Altman. Peterson checks in for Hunter Howard for the Wildcats. And meanwhile, Lucas Altman is going to check back into the midfield and give Chris Welsh a breather there. So now we've got. Austin Tuggle, Andre Siri, and Lucas Altman all playing in that center midfield position in the Terriers 4 3 3. Some great combinations there between John Dale and Drew Kruger for the Wildcats. They find the ball all the way to the other side of the field. Ultimately, that ball cleared out by Kyle Nelson. Not before bouncing around inside the 18. Just a few times. Tuggle providing pressure in the midfield. That was Fetcher who tried to find the far side. The Terriers don't have many options up top. Alex Thompson trying to provide pressure up there as the lone forward right now. Donahue kind of holding back along with Nikki Watson. Trying to help with some defense for their outside backs. The AR on the near sideline calls offsides again on the Wildcats. Kloss not moving very quickly. Again, trying to use as much time as possible with what's left of now under 15 minutes in regulation. A ball played forward. The Wildcats trying to find Danny Davis. Instead, that ball is going to go out of bounds. Tanner DeFreeman is going to have a throw Nash Wagnon. And Nash Wagnon is going to come in and replace Connor Donahue. Wagner, a sophomore out of Atlanta. Going to be playing alongside his fellow Atlanta native, Andre Siri. Wagner going as the left forward. Alex Thompson as the center forward. Nikki Watson still over there on the right side. You've got Nash Wagner with the ball at his feet. Andre Siri, who already has a goal tonight, asking for it and rips the first time shot from just outside the 18. That one goes wide left. And Kennison's going to take the goal kick for the Wildcats. Straight on. Kelly wins the header, but just after Lucas Altman was fouled right at midfield. A big kick forward by Kyle Nelson. 
Altman there to defend in the midfield along with Austin Tuggle who slides over. DeFridis steps in and wins a great ball with his left foot. Alex Thompson trying to slide across the top. And a great header from Drayton Kelly as he's running backwards. Kyle Nelson goes down hard. No foul called there on Pragnell. Instead, Garrett Kloss will call anybody off of that one and slowly lets that ball roll back to him before he picks it up. A good choice from Lucas Altman, playing it all the way back to Garrett Kloss. Allow the Terriers to reset. Kloss gets that one off. Just in the nick of time, Alex Thompson's there to help pressure. Dradon Kelly slides over as DeFridis stepped up to win that ball. We'll find DeFridis. We'll play a left-footed ball out of bounds. And the Wildcats will have a throw in. first for the Wildcats, number 20, Ned Morissette. Entering for the Terriers, number eight, Matthew Orednick. So Orednick checks back in up top for the Terriers, the target forward. He replaces Alex Thompson. Quick touch inside the box. Kyle Nelson breaks it up. Nikki Watson trying to recover back, help Kevin Davidson. Ball played inside the box. A look on goal. Garrett Kloss gets a hand on it, and that one goes wide left for a Davidson corner kick. Corner kick, Davidson. Right-footed in-swinger inside the six. That one lands. Drayton Kelly clears it out. Can hear Garrett Kloss again instructing his back line to step out of the back. Looks like referee's going to call a foul. You can hear head coach Ralph Poulsen saying, Maddie, can you help us out? And that was addressed at Matthew Rednick trying to get back and help the Terriers defend. Got lucky there. That one just inches away from going in the goal. Garrett Kloss takes a deep breath. Matthew Rednick played that one forward, trying to find Austin Tuggle. Kennison collects the ball. Big ball played forward. Kevin Davidson is there along with Kyle Nelson. Great defending from those two. Davidson looks up top. A redneck will slide over. And that one's cleared out of bounds. Davidson's going to take his time trying to get this throw in off. Checking for the two years, they substitute four, Matthew, Matthew Ward. Ward in to replace Nikki Watson. Lucas Altman switches the field on a first-time ball. Another great first-time ball from Nash Wagnon. You can see where Matthew Rednick's asking for it. Austin Tuggle tries to play him through, just bounces off his heel. Terrier's looking for another opportunity on goal with just under nine minutes remaining in the second half. Matthew Ward has the ball at his feet. Referee is going to call a foul there. It's like on Malcolm McCabe. Kyle Nelson calls Lucas Altman off of that one, telling his team to get forward. And a big ball played up top. That one goes right to the hands of Kennison. on Kelly and Garrett Kloss right there. Kelly decided to clear that one out, although Kloss called him off of it. Kloss able to reset back inside his box. High 
high pressure in the midfield from Tuggle, Wagnon, and Altman. That ball played through as Kyle Nelson is able to get a hold on it. He'll clear a big ball forward with his right foot. A redneck, the only one there against three defenders. Right-footed ball played forward over to the far side. Kevin Davidson there to defend. Inside the 18, a look on goal. It looks like it would be a terrier goal kick. The corner center kick, referee is kicks. calling a corner kick for Davidson. Ball played inside the box. And it looks like both the AR and the center referee have called a goal kick initially, and now the center referee is overturning that and saying it is, in fact, a corner kick. Davidson. Wildcats. Matthew Ward now has the ball at his feet. Nash Wagnon there to support. A great little heel ball to Wagnon. He's going to play a left-footed ball forward. See if Matthew Redneck can get there all the way across the field. Matthew Redneck does that. He's got support from Andre Siri. You can hear him saying, on your right. Unable to connect that pass. Just on top of the 18. Ball played forward from Aiden Peterson. Kyle Nelson will drop that one back to Kloss. A big ball forward as Matthew Ward tries to settle it down. A big ball played forward. Again, Kloss is going to Allow some time to run out before he has to pick that ball up with four and a half minutes remaining in the second half. Good pressure in the midfield by two freshmen there, Austin Tuggle, Lucas Altman. Kyle Nelson wins the header as he's Running backwards, Kevin Davidson tries to clear it forward. Great pressure from Tuggle to help recover back. Ball cleared out by the Terriers. Rednick has the ball at his feet. He's got Nash Wagner on the near side supporting him. Andre Siri just behind. Davidson able to break that one up. And then now they're coming out the other way. Austin Tuggle makes the tackle there. That one rolls out of bounds for a Davidson throw in. Ball played forward, trying to get in behind that Wofford defense. Unable to do so as that ball rolls out of bounds with three minutes remaining in the second half. Austin Truggle, Tuggle trying to get out of some traffic there in the midfield. You can hear Garrett Kloss telling Kyle Nelson exactly what to do. Kyle Nelson wasn't sure if he should pass it back, let it roll through to Kloss. You can hear Kloss yelling out, out. The ball played all the way across the field. Kevin Davidson has two men to mark as Austin Tuggle comes to help him out. A great overlapping run on the far side, a 45 degree angle 
ball back towards the penalty kick mark. And the Terriers are lucky that that one didn't find the back of the net. Great look on goal as that one goes out over the end line for a Garrett Kloss goal kick with two minutes remaining. Lucas Altman gets up to challenge the header. Tanner DeFridis is going to take that time, allow the ball to roll out of bounds. Doesn't even ask for a ball from the ball boy standing right there. Instead, just walks a little bit further to get the one that's already out. Wagnon got a touch on it, or Rednick is going to find him again. Andre Siri is there to support. Over on the far side is Matthew Ward. Fast feet from Ward. He tries to find a left-footed look on goal. That one's denied. Lucas Altman is going to play it back forward, trying to find Andre Siri up top. Ash Wagnon comes back to help defend, finds Matthew Ward on the right side. A few bodies inside the box. One minute, one minute remaining in regulation. And the Terriers are going to try and see if they can create just one last opportunity with under a minute remaining. As that one rolls out of bounds, Davidson, a quick surge. That's Austin Tuggle with the ball at his feet. And he's going to try a shot on goal from just outside the 18, saved by Kennison. Played forward. And a throw in for Davidson as they look for one last Ten, opportunity. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. And that's how this one will end. The Terriers come away with their first at home victory of the season. And their home opener up a 26 minute goal from sophomore Kyle Nelson, followed by a 64th minute goal from Andre Siri. Thanks so much for joining us on the Southern Conference Digital Network. We'll see you back here Friday at 7.30 as the men's soccer team hosts Gardner West.